welcome back. You're watching Egyptian Nights, and we will continue our show with a new guest and a new topic. We're joined by Dr. Mona Zeki, strategic consultant and regional consultant for the Financial Times. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Now, being an international consultant in strategic planning and marketing, it would seem that we lack planning here in Egypt. Um, I wouldn't say that exactly. Uh, the idea is uh, we need more of strategic thinking. Which and by strategic you is, mean long term? What thinking. is strategic thinking? Yeah. It's the vision you formulate, mm -hmm. what you want to be or what your business want to be on the long term in the future yeah. so this once you formulate a vision you make a kind of a profile for your company or business or even your life because i believe that strategic thinking is a way of thinking it's a culture we should really promote in our lives in our business in our uh, uh, everyday life not just on long-term planning so once you formulate this vision and you make a profile of it, mm -hmm. this will lead you to planning and here comes the strategic planning okay. after strategic thinking. So you have the strategic planning and you have the operational plan, the strategy and the tactics. They both come after the strategic thinking which is the vision you really want to formulate for the future of your company or even your life. Okay. Doctor, is it a problem that uh, mainly the objective is not that smart? The objective? It's not smart. Um, we don't have like long-term objective and uh, what to achieve now and what, and not specified. It's yeah, not but, you, but you know, once you have this vision, because you, you, you really have to sit with the key decision makers, and the leaders of the business or the leaders of the, the government or the country or, or the leaders of your, uh, your own leader of your life, you know. Once you formulate this vision, once you, you decide and you test and you capitalize on the problems and the opportunities and you have this vision in, formulated, so you set your objectives, your goals. Are they realistic? Are they feasible? Because you can set unrealistic objectives. And that's where, where, when it's really not very smart, you see? So you need to study the opportunities. It's very much like the uh, SWOT analysis. You, you study your strengths, your opportunities, you study your threats, and you, 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 you see where you fit here and what can be really achieved and what cannot. And sometimes you have a dream that looks unrealistic, but you work so hard in planning, back to planning, and the importance of planning and strategic planning, you work so hard to realize this dream and make it true. So it, there is nothing impossible in life. Okay. It's just it needs a good vision, good planning, good tactics, good implementation, and definitely you will have good results. Yeah. But there's definitely been a shift in terms of how businesses think in terms of their future. There has been positive develop development. Would you tend to agree with this assertion that yes. businesses are openly embracing uh, yes. this type of thinking, this culture that you are talking Absolutely, about? Absolutely, because now business is more open. Yeah. Because we live in a uh, globalized uh, business. It's the global uh, economy. So it's the multinational influence. Right. So everything is well exposed, is well open. So once you have this, you're open to more long-term planning, you're open to more strategic thinking, uh, way of thinking. It's a great management tool in such a turbulent, fast-changing environment. Unless you have this strategic thinking and this vision, I don't think you can, at least you, you cannot guarantee sustainability because without planning and operational plan, there is no sustainability in the business. So you're absolutely right that the shift now is more into the culture of strategic thinking and strategic planning. Doctor, usually, um, I don't know, but I believe that marketing is something very important and usually have a problem with marketing, actually. Yeah. And when we started to concentrate on marketing, we started to move on to HR, because again, how to apply to be a good marketeer. 
Yeah. So the idea of marketing is that we can have it like, let's say, uh, something of our daily life. Yeah, you know, it's important for us to understand marketing in order to live, not only to work as marketeers. Yeah, you, you know, marketing, uh, the, this famous uh, four P's of marketing, you have the product, you have the place, you have the price, and you have the promotion. And uh, we added uh, two more P's, you have the planet, which is you have to respect the environment, and you have the people, which is back to human resources, as you were just saying. So once you have a good product, it's not enough because you, you don't want to end up having a great pl product and you don't know how to sell it, how to market it. So uh, it's, it's a combination and it's an integration of, of those pieces together. And this needs to study, it's a science. And it's all management, it's all about management. So once you study this, you know, the problem is people uh, take it for granted. You know, I have a good product, it will, it, it will sell itself. Sell itself. It doesn't work this way. You need, to, you need consultants to help you. You need the science to help you. You need to study how to market your, your product. Yeah. Okay. In your work as a consultant for the Financial Times, what is, uh, what is some of the feedback that you get from them in terms of their interest in investing in Egypt or uh, seeking financial uh, opportunities in the country? You see, the Financial Times, uh, not because I'm the consultant, uh, the regional consultant, but it is the most credible, credible um, newspaper in the world. I, I see it this way. Otherwise, I wouldn't be their consultant, yeah. you know. Um, and this way it comes to separate between advertising and editorial. They have, it's a love-hate relationship and they have really a very strong principle here. You, you can have an ad in the paper and on the next page you can be easily criticized. Yeah. They don't go together. So that's a credibility. And what I like about the uh, Financial Times is this uh, Egypt report annually. Uh, they have on each country an annual report. And when it comes to Egypt, it's a great opportunity for the Egyptian government and the Egyptian business people and Egyptian companies and multinational companies that are interested to invest in Egypt, this is a great platform for them to, um, to witness the opportunities, to, uh, to discuss and analyze the strengths and the weakness of investing uh, in the country. So it exposes Egypt and it puts it on the international map of business, of international business. As a strategic consultant and marketing as well, how do you see the future of marketing and planning in Egypt? Uh, on that note, Thanks, I would li I'd, like to, I'd like to add something. Uh, from, from what I see in the streets and see in the newspapers and print and so forth, is that the principles of advertising uh, and marketing are not always properly implemented. There's a lot of uh, unregulated, deregulated uh, practices. So that was just to add to her question, and now, of course, your view and your take on perhaps how can that improve over the next few years? Yeah. You, we need to go back to the code of ethics. Okay. This is what really I, I would love to see more, more people sticking to the code of ethics and the principles of, mar of marketing, of advertising, of business in general. But what I see really and would love to see is the integration of those principles into social work, social into, responsibility, into community service, into, uh, you know, for example, by pure chance, uh, this morning uh, I was discussing with a colleague of mine and a good friend of mine uh, the establishment of a foundation called the Streets of Hope Foundation. This is a terrible problem we have. It's a strategic problem because the, we have the street children and we have quite a few of them. It's a, big, it's a big number of children really are homeless. Strategically, in few years, they will be adults. And what about their future and their influence in the society? Yeah. So if we don't really consider this problem right now on a strategic level, we're going to suffer later. 
And this is very important. So uh, it, it, back to the code of ethics. Why do we have this problem? Why do we have, we have to have a research-based information first? We have to study the, why do we have this problem? The history of the problem, the, what, what made it so huge? And of course, it's, it's a huge story. It's the, it's the um, you know, single parents problems. It's the divorce problem. It's, it's problems. many, many problems. But so if we don't take those problems uh, with a good research-based information yeah. and mix it with the present and the, uh, the make a strategy and implement really a good strategy to fight or to counteract this problem, yeah. I think we'll end up with a tragedy. So this is an, on a social level. Yeah. Unfortunately, time is running up, but still, when we are talking about marketing, we have a lot of things to talk about. Absolutely. But in a few words, you think it is promising the future of marketing in Egypt? 100%. Okay. Thank you. And this 100% from here, we thank Dr. Mona Zaki. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, still thank we have you. more to bring you from our We Egypt do. Tonight. We have a lot of un items that we need to check off of our list, uh, a jam-packed show in terms of reports, in terms...